All right, let's make another new conceptual mass here and talk a bit about uh, the direct manipulation. Uh, and we'll do it in something a little simpler this time rather than the kind of funky shapes we've been doing. So I'll come in and just draw a rectangle. I'll select my rectangle and hit the Create Form button. And it just went ahead and made a volume extrusion for me, which I can go ahead and directly manipulate like I could before. I can directly manipulate edges and adjust that shape. We can also do it dimensionally, same way we could. So the kind of we could before the interface interface remains the same. Uh, we could drag that in and adjust that. Now you can see our manipulator adjusted to the faces. If I hit spacebar, it adjusts. Um, so quickly model that. You can select faces and draw right on them. So if I wanted to draw on here, uh, I got. Oh, that's a doubly curved surface. It might be. Let's see. In this case, it wants to associate to a plane. Or we could let's try drawing right on this one. There it goes. So it's trying to draw into that face. So we could select this curve, and we'll say create form. In this case, we'll make a void, and it push that void in, and there it goes. It cut it right out, and that becomes. Um, directly manipulatable geometry as well so we can come in and just pull that down make that bigger let's get that point and pull that so these are the kind of things we can do with this geometry now and all dimensionally drivable as well so here's the kind of direct manipulation that you can do in Revit now that you couldn't do before and it's Really quite nice and you can still drive all these things with parameters like you could before um, one of the tricky things it's not quite tricky you just need to be aware of it is setting your plane in advance so if I want a dimension this is the plane I'm essentially drawing on um, I'll go ahead and make a dimension still learning the interface a little bit I want to create a align dimension let's say it's from that point to that point and we'll draw that out so that point's been set and we can actually select that. Our dimension becomes active like it did before and drive it. But the really cool thing is we can start to make parameters for these things. So let's add a parameter and let's just call it uh, point elevation for now. Put that on dimensions. All this is the same and familiar. We'll say OK. So I can go to my types and change that to 190. We'll hit apply. Oh, and we lost our constraint. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's actually dimension it. Let's set this as our plane. Let's go to create a line. Let's dimension from the reference plane to the point. We're still going to run into the same hierarchical problems we were having before with Revit, so we have to be very deliberate about what's driving what, and we want to make sure that the reference plane is the kind of pinned object. So let's set the label of point elevation. Let's try that again. 190, hit apply, and there it goes. Now it works. It just didn't know which point to push. Um, so in, you, who's ever watched my videos before knows this is how we do these things. I. I'll let it break and we'll just go through. So let's hit OK. So the important thing to point out, and one of the things that I think is particularly cool with this new release is before, we could only do it by hitting this Type button. Now I can select this point, drive it down, and my parameter updated. That was, at least for me, a major pain in workflow before, and it's a non-issue anymore. You can interact with parameters either through the GUI or through the type parameters. So that's direct manipulation and just a little bit about parameter making. If there's any questions, feel free to post them.